Since prices for the 5700X3D and 5800 x 3 have gone up as stock has been drying up, I no longer consider them the best bang for the buck option for a Tarkov build. So I'm starting a new round of testing to figure out what actually is the best value right now. Today I'm testing a Ryzen 7600X paired with the Radeon 9060 XT 16GB. I'm running 32 gigs of RAM and I've already benchmarked the 9060 XT quite a bit on my channel. It's not quite a high setting 1440 card but it can go up to 1440 with FSR3 quality on high settings. In 1080 you can comfortably run ultra settings without any upscaling. So I've got the 7600X tuned with the plus 200 megahertz boost override and a minus 30 curve optimizer undervolt across all cores. It's paired with 32 gigs of DDR5 at 8,000 megatransfers per second at CL36. These are SK Hynix A dies. I'm running the U clock at 1 to 2 because I'm over 6400. And the F clock is locked at 2000 megahertz. SMT is off, echo mode is off. I've already posted full tuning guides for some of my other chips. But if you're interested in a detailed walkthrough for the 7600, let me know in the comments. And if I get enough interest, I'll put together a full video covering my entire tune. For this test, I focused on two maps. Lighthouse, which is one of the better optimized maps, and Streets, which is still the hardest on your system by far. So I'll break down the performance and how the game feels to play on the setup, and we'll start with Lighthouse. Like I mentioned earlier, Lighthouse is one of Tarkov's better optimized maps, and it shows. Along the main road, we're holding around 130 to 140, and the in-game feel is very smooth. In more complex areas like the Rogue Camp, I was expecting the FPS to drop, but we're still seeing around 130 FPS, so really good performance there. Kind of surprised me a little bit, actually. Near the coastline, it actually climbs up to around 150 to 160, especially if you're looking out towards the sea, then... There's just less assets to load and the FPS can rise a little bit. Overall, the experience in Lighthouse is really stable. Frame pacing is very clean. There's no major hitches. 7600X is holding up really well here. Even without the massive L3 cache you'd get from an X3D chip. Now there's one thing I do want to mention about the 1% lows. If you're using the RTSS overlay with Afterburner, the 1% low value you see on the screen isn't real time. It's an average over the entire session. So if you open up your inventory mid game, that can trigger a short frame time spike and that low spike will stick around in your 1% low data and skew it until you manually reset it. So that's why I tend to reset the 1% counter often during my benchmarks. If you don't do that, the number you see will probably make you think your system is underperforming. And you can see that here. I'll show you exactly when I reset the 1% low and this is what it actually is and you'll see it go from around 70 to over 100. That's because it was skewed from the last time I opened the inventory and when I reset it that's what it actually is when I'm just moving around the map. So that's Lighthouse, it's running really well in 1440 FSR3 quality on my Pure 80 preset which is my optimized high setting preset. If you have any questions about that, you can check out my optimization video here. And moving over to Streets of Tarkov, this is where the system really gets put to the test. This map still pushes both the CPU and GPU harder than anything else in the game. Around the cinema area, we're sitting at around 100 to 110 FPS. Pretty solid, especially considering how heavy this part of the map is. Over in the abandoned factory area, performance actually improves a bit, hitting 120 to 130 FPS likely because it's a bit more open and less dense on the asset streaming side. Inside Pinewood Hotel, performance drops back down to around that 100 to 110 range. And across from the mall on Klimov Street, this is probably the heaviest area in the map, along with Lexos. We're sitting closer to around 90 FPS, and I would consider this the floor FPS for this setup. While the average FPS is important, the frame pacing can affect how the game feels pretty heavily. Even though we're seeing some drops in the heavier areas, the gameplay is still pretty smooth and responsive on this setup. The 7600X is doing very well here, though I am getting some micro stutter in spots where the map loads in big chunks or moving quickly between zones or turning around quickly and looking into a heavier area. But overall, 
I mean, I'm not mad at this performance at all. I've tested different RAM capacities and I've found that ever since patch 0.16, 64 gigs is ideal for the best performance. But this setup is doing really well even on 32. And I'm pretty impressed with the performance considering the cost of this setup. If you're running a similar setup but not seeing these kinds of numbers, feel free to hop into my Discord. The link's in the top right corner and down in the description. I'm always happy to help out with optimization tips. And if you're looking for more in-depth, personalized help, Tier 3 channel members get access to one-on-one -on -one optimization and troubleshooting support. And that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.